on Fox. What were you doing on Fox? I'm glad you were watching Fox. I was. Because I, I know you're normally watching CNN or yeah, something. Yeah, no, so I mean, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, so I did a segment today on Fox talking about women in the automotive industry and uh, talking about what type of cars that women prefer and uh, talking about Elon Musk. I got thrown that curveball immediately. Well, what did you say about Elon? Well, first of all, you know, they had a recall today, 123,000 cars, the S model. So. That's all of them. You know, no, so they down. asked me on Fox, they're like, so what do you think about the viability of Tesla? I'm like, Tesla's going to be okay, no worries. Yeah, don't, They got don't, this. Don't be, don't be betting against Elon. Never. Never, I, ever, ever. I, and then they said, but if it'll take three years to get some of the cars. I'm like, it's fine. They'll wait. The customers will wait. You know, it's a beautiful business model, Brian. If it takes three years to get the car, you're going to see other major entrants from Honda, Toyota, and Nissan in there that will really give uh, a good... Uh, Mr. Musk, a good run for his money, but I, I'm with you. Don't count Elon Musk. Ever. Out. He, is he the, sent a Tesla to space, for God's sakes. He's the <laughs> ultimate disruptor. Ultimate. Uh, so, talk to us about your group, your organization, Women in Automotive. I think it's such an amazing uh, opportunity. And I mean, and this is the perfect time to be discussing women in all business, but specifically yes. women in automotive. What, what's your mission there? Yes, and thank you very much. So I'm very excited. I've served on the board for the last couple of years of the Women in Automotive. So we're the only organization uh, in the country that we, we mobilize women and we bring them together twice a year for an event. Um, which it teaches women how to be better in the automotive industry, both retail and wholesale. And what we want to do is that we want to be evangelists for the automotive industry. We think every woman should serve somewhere in the automotive industry. But I have to, I have to put out a prop. This is the first time that we decided to add men to our board. Well, that's fair and balanced. That's fair and balanced, just like Fox News today when I was on. Although I, did, I have a few death threats on Twitter, you know that, right? Well, your friends, you're, you're, you're... Yeah, I got, a, I got a few death threats. I was talking about cars, not Trump. Right. Anyways, um, and so we decided to add, we, we've, we've invited three people so far for men, and they've all accepted, and that would be Mr. Brian Benstock um, uh, from Paragon Honda. Alex Vetter, who is the CEO of Cars.com. Absolute rock star. And Chip Perry, uh, the CEO of True Car. So right now, you are our three men that are going to help guide us into the next into the next phase of women in automotive. That, that's fantastic. And I'll take the bronze medal with that. those three. I mean, uh, Chip and Alex Vetter are absolute industry leaders. And thank you for including me amongst those uh, really high-performing uh, individuals. Now, women in automotive, it's funny. My partner, my business partner, Edith Singer, is obviously is a woman and an incredibly successful woman. Yes. Well, why, why do you feel that there aren't more women in the automotive space? Because it's been traditionally for the last hundred years a male dominated industry. Um, there, there's a lack of role models or relatable role models within the industry and um, there's a lack of evangelists for the industry and that's the reason that we formed Women in Automotive two or three or four years ago I guess it's been now so that we could evangelize the opportunities for the automotive industry. But not only evangelize, but be able to bring people together twice a year. Women, you know, a Cadillac, Hyundai, Tesla was our sponsor last time. Sure. I mean, our sponsor lineup is insane. And But to bring people together to make strategic introductions and then also to have some of the conversations that women are afraid to have, frankly, at the retail level. I, 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 I respect what you're doing for women in automotive. And what you're doing is re you're really educating people, women yes. specifically about our industry. Evangelizing. Yes. I have to tell you. The automobile business is one of the best kept secrets in business. Yes. I know gentlemen that have started and women that have started in this business and, and several months later are on track for six figure salaries and incomes. Yep. There's no discrimination. You have a pay plan and your ability and mm -hmm. you take that pay plan, that ability and that product and you, the sky's the limit. Yep. And I think it's one of the best kept secrets in all business of what people, men and women, can do in the business. So I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of your evangelizing women, but I would hope that you would invite men to join the business as well because it is a fantastic opportunity. Absolutely. No, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, the men, men haven't had a hard time joining the business the last hundred years. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of men in the business, and I think more good men should come into the business. Agreed. But, you know, where, where it's uneven, when women influence 85%, of all purchases when it comes to automobiles, you know, you need to have more women influencing the business. And influencing meaning working in the car dealership. So what you're saying is the future is female? The future is female. Uh, I, I think the future is frictionless, but perhaps it's a frictionless female. In, in the future. There's no such thing as a friction of female. Now, come true. on. Now, come on. Uh, we've been discussing that this morning. There's a lot of yes. friction. <laughs> talk, talk to us about your, your, your new project, The Big Sell. Thank you. What, uh, what, what is 
What's the genesis of that? Where do you hope to take it? What are you doing? I'm seeing you everywhere. You're talking to all the best and the biggest and the brightest in the industry, not just automotive. So talk to us about the big sell. Yeah, the big sell. In fact, I was just uh, I was just hired by Nestle to come in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to speak at their event. But it's really it's about building a movement. So perfect example, Paragon Honda. I like that example. Yes, it's a great example. Brian, you have built a movement in the automotive industry. Everybody is following you. I mean, this man, you were at NADA. Um, you had a, a room of 100, which, I mean, that's that's a hard room to fill when there's 150 different sessions going on at the same sure, time. Sure, sure. And I, I, I know you don't want me to tell the story, but 400 people end up in your session, and the fire marshal shuts it down. It was pretty amazing. Um, yeah, that's exactly but what But that's happened. what happens when you build a movement. See, you are an influencer in our industry, and everyone else goes, I can just find out one way to do it like Brian. So that's the art of the big sell is how do you build a movement and then you build an empire. I mean, you have built an empire. I mean, I look around the showroom today and it's like, it's insanely busy. And you're sitting here in Queens, New York. I, I you know, I don't know. Love, beautiful, beautiful I love sunny Queens. Queens, New York. Sunny Queens, New York. It's fantastic. But, you know, just to see the kind of traffic and, and the energy, yeah. the, right? The energy is key. And I think at Phoenix, we've got a fantastic staff. The product is second to none. The location is fantastic as well. But so if anybody out there needs to buy a car today, come on down. I'm here, and I'm going to cut you a hell of a good deal. There you go. I've been clicking up and down going, come on, guys, let's get on the phone. Don't it's cost, the end of the month. Don't cost me money. <laughs> now, so, so. Who is your target audience in the big cell? And what is it that you're trying to accomplish? Okay, yeah, so my target audience in the big cell would be any company, any organization that that, that is really struggling to define their purpose, right? It's about defining your purpose. It's about figuring out who is the common enemy that, that, that galvanizes both you and your customer so that your customer becomes a champion. It doesn't matter what you sell, it's what you stand for. Right, for sure. example, Paragon Honda, you know, your your common enemy with your customer is the fact that, you know, they don't want to have to come into the showroom. The fr they want friction. a frictionless, yeah, right. it's friction, that right. is the common enemy. Right. And so your customers have gotten behind you and the minute that you put everything into place that you have put in place, Paragon Direct, now all of a sudden your customers are locking arms with you right. you know we're, we're and they're saying I, I want to do business with this guy because he understands that my time is important we're, we're trying to change that paradigm uh, you know we, we have a 12-step sales process that we've been using for the past hundred years and what if there was a, a two-step sales process where it's really select and purchase rather than all these other steps and who do the steps benefit they usually benefit the dealer right. not the consumer right. so I, I think we have to re rethink that we have a, a kiosk uh, uh, next to us, where people were able to go and select the car. I mean, you took me through it today. It was amazing. Le less than a minute to purchase a car, uh, to pick the car. I got to three pick of the them being delivered to Texas. It was go. tricky, tricky. Be careful. I was wondering why he wanted my social security number, but now I know. And, and we were thinking, you know, the difficulties that um, some dealers are facing is, is trying to get people to come to their business today. People don't want to go to business. You, you look at. You're not uh, having that problem today. We're, we're, this place is packed. We, we are packed, but you know, we've got to think long term, and that's the problem is that currently the business is great, and so a lot of dealers can think that that's going to continue. You see the trends going on with big stores today. 6,000 stores closed last year in the United States. 6,000. Including Manhattan. That, that is correct. And, and that's, that's unfortunately. Because it's the boys in Queens. No, you know, I think it's, it's the expense of doing business in a city like Manhattan. And those expenses are increasing every year, and there's margin compression that's happening. But you're still selling cars in Manhattan, so people are still buying cars. People are buying cars, people are consuming transportation, but they're consuming that transportation differently. And we've got to be able to be wherever the customers are, however they want us to be there. Let's, let's look at Amazon, up 1900% in sales over the last 10 years. And, and then you look at it, a store like Sears, that's down 95%. A store like Nordstrom's down 45%. And Nordstrom's gives great customer service. Yeah. But why are they down? Because the convenience of being able to talk to a device and have that the the, the product delivered directly to your front door uh, is what's ruling. And in fact, if you look at Amazon, they're not even the low-cost providers, but they are providing an excellent service. Because I don't care. Like, I want convenience. I'm not going to ask you, if, if you make my life easier, I'm not going to beat you up on you know a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, and I think that that's where the automotive industry is going to see that how it's going to benefit them with what you're doing is the fact that people you know if, if you deliver a car to my house, if you pick up my car at six o'clock at night and you service it tonight, and it's back in my driveway, which is what Paragon does, right. it's back in my driveway at six a.m. tomorrow morning. 
I really don't care what it costs me. I'm not going to beat you up over the nickels and the pennies. And, and I think, you know, we were discussing this before. As time is money. We are evangelizing uh, what we're doing at Paragon as well. And, and uh, people are asking... You are a movement. People are asking, why are we, you talking, are the big sell. Why are we talking about it? Because uh, Paragon can't do this by themselves. We need all of the dealers offering similar services so that we can prevent the disruptors from coming in and having an advantage over us. Okay, so I want you to explain that. I know this is your show, but I'm asking questions. So sure. you, you and I met back in 2012, and we, we were both speaking at the same event, and we've been the greatest friends ever since. Um, and you were you were a disruptor back when being a disruptor wasn't cool. Like, I, like you were saying things on the stage that time in Miami, and I was like, well, that doesn't even make sense. And I was a car dealer back then. Right. And now you've just taken it full circle, and you know you have built the movement, which is you know the future of retail is frictionless. That is the movement. And I think that it the is. entire well, obviously the whole industry is doing this. That's right. You know, you're on the cover of every magazine. You know, but anyways, yeah. all of that being said, why why does it benefit you, Paragon Honda, to help Ford across the street do the same thing? Like, Ford across the street is in no danger of figuring this out. What the, my my my, <laughs> me, my message is to Honda. And, and to align with the dealers and to align with Google to have a process that's streamlined and makes it easier for our customers to acquire our products. If we don't make it easier for our customers to acquire our products, others will. And, and look at Tesla. Tesla's pierced the, the corporate, uh, the, the franchise laws yeah. uh, with, with electrification. What's to prevent other entrants from coming into the market like Apple? And, you know, and if Apple, Apple comes, cars, yeah, Apple cars, why not? Are you, you predicting know, Tim, it? I'm predicting it. Good Tim Friday. Cook, Tim Friday. Cook said the ultimate mobile device is an automobile, and he start looking at how expansive they're thinking. And say, oh, my God, that's I have looked like that. The ultimate mobile device is an automobile. And what if mobile, uh, Apple starts making a car? I'm such an Apple junk, junkie. I'm a car one. You would. Absolutely. You would. So, so that that could disrupt At least for your daughter. Our, that could disrupt our business. I think that they're going to have a difficult time competing with the products that Honda makes. I think the Honda Motor Corporation makes a fantastic product. And we can compare and compete head to head with any manufacturer. Yeah. However, yeah. Apple's a formal competitor, and we know where Apple's going to have an advantage is in the customer experience. And so I'm saying to the dealers and, and, and to the manufacturer, we've got to work on that customer experience now. Okay, so what you're saying, though, because people ask me all the time, they're like, you're friends with that Ben Stock guy, right? I'm like, yes, I am. Why is he doing this? Why is he letting all of his trade secrets out? And I said, because he's just such a, a thought leader. But, but now, I, I understand better than I ever have, but the fact that you you want Honda to adopt this Absolutely. so that the Honda dealers have that leg up, Leg up on the disruptors that are coming into the market. And yeah, Lisa, we don't talk about any trade secrets. Believe me, that stuff is kept hidden. But we're talking in a, in, in a high level. Page three. <laughs> on a high level about what we can do to bring services that are common in every other industry to the automobile business. It should be so obvious to us. You can't wait for people to come to us. Nobody wants to go wait in your service department for three hours while you're having an oil change. Nobody wants to drink your bad coffee, eat your stale donuts, and watch whatever's on your television in, in the service department. Which is department. typically t uh, automotive TV now, so it's just a bunch of looping of dealers' uh, uh, commercials. Exactly right. Every dealer I consult from, like, get rid of it. What is the value for a customer being in the service department, babysitting their car it's while you serve. It's not. It's not. It's terrible. And, and we, we figure what we can do is make better use of the customers 95% of the time where that car is not being used to service the car. And who are we going after? I'm not going after Ford. I'm not going even after Toyota or Nissan. We're going after the in independents. Do you realize that 75% of our service business is lost to the independents? Preach. And, and, and it's for only one reason, because of proximity. So by picking up and delivering customers' cars, we take proximity out of the mix. But you've also taken it one step further, because when you were in Austin, and you and I spoke at an event um, recently, yeah, when it was recent, but anyways, yeah. you and I were talking about the fact, and the fact that you know, you're now you're running your service department 24 hours a day, and I'm like, how do you get the text to do that? I mean, I was with uh, a, a, another dealer here in Queens yesterday, and that she asked me, you know, how does he get that done? And I'm like, he's Ben Stock, he just gets it done. You, you've got to feed the fish the food they like to eat, you've got to move at the pace of customers, and believe it or not, there are a tremendous amount of customers that are willing to come into the service department at night or have their cars serviced at night. There are a number of people that are willing to work in the service department. Well, the customers all day long. Sure. But that nine to five job doesn't exist anywhere in any industry. Okay, is there anymore. another dealership in, is it called Burroughs? 
Mine five like, boroughs, yes. Five, another dealership in the five boroughs. I'm going to report out. Uh-huh. <coughs> that, that does 24-hour service? You know, n not that I'm aware of as far as from a manufacturer. You do have uh, the independent taxi care, uh, cab shops. They know that that's what they have to do. They've got to keep those cars running 24-7. And, and, and why do those guys have us out box? You know, most dealers, for the most part, when they wanted to service a customer's car, the customer had have to come in between 8 and 5. If not, they couldn't get their car service. Remember the days when a bank was open from 9 to 3? Yeah. And, and, and they had to change. We need to change The light well. has been on on my car for like four months. It's a coolant light. I don't even know what it does. Thank you. Uh, I don't even know what it is. I'm thinking, well, it's not cool outside, so I'm okay. But I have not had time to take it to the dealership because I'm on the road all the time. And nobody does. So, yeah. but, but, but your car is sitting 95% of the time. So right now, while you're here talking to me, somebody should be able to pick up that car, take care of One the service. One of my children, JT. Not in it. Don't let your kids do it. You know, we, we can outsource all of this. I know. I, I have a dry cleaning service that comes to my house, picks up my clothes on Tuesday, drops them off on Friday. I don't know where they're located. I have never been to that dry cleaner, and it's irrelevant. I think the same thing here. I would, If our customers never went to our service department but used our facility, that's a win for everybody. We can handle more capacity, we can take care of it better, and the customers wouldn't have to be sitting in the service department babysitting their car while we do uh, routine service. So I told you this story last time I was here, but I, I had taken an Uber home um, from New York. I was here a month ago, I guess, right. and I had taken an Uber home, and I'm, so I'm talking to the driver going to the airport, and I'm like, oh my God, you've got this Honda, and it's, I said, my good friend owns, you know, owns Paragon Honda, and he said, um, he goes, well, I didn't buy it there, he says, but I get it serviced there, and I said, well, why didn't you buy it there? He goes, I didn't know about them, but then I found out about their service department, and they service it at night, he goes, so I'm going to buy all my cars there now. That's right. You know, it's interesting uh, like, wow. th that dealers also sometimes are resistant to looking at the different ways that consumers are consuming transportation, and I know some dealers that don't embrace Uber. And those are our best customers. Right. You know, Uber customers are buying their cars more often and they're servicing more often. So I think it's really important that we embrace the new entrance into the market. What do you think about subscription-based? I, I think there's a real future in subscription-based. You know that I launched subscription car mobility. I heard I about that. Was three, it in Georgia? Yeah, it was in Austin, Texas. Austin, that's Thank just you like so Georgia. Much. Just Anything, like Georgia, something like and that. And South New Yeah, so three Georgia. years ago, and uh, I had a great experience with it. And so, you know, but, you know, that is the future. I think I think we were a little ahead of the curve on that, but now it's absolutely a conversation. At Women in Automotive, we had Cadillac there talking about the box, or the, uh, it launched here in New York. Uh, Anyway, so, so Cadillac's uh, car uh, car subscription program. I just covered the Chicago Auto Show. Had a great talk with the Volvo executives. And Volvo's got a great program now. It's a good program. And so, but I mean, I would think in a city like this, that mobility and transportation, that if you can offer another alternative to that, it's like home run. That city, that the Manhattan, New York? New York City, is has the lowest car ownership of any major city in the United States of America. And it's not because they can't afford it. They don't need to afford it because yeah. there are other alternatives. Alternatives, Lyft, Uber, flexible drive platforms. So we have to uh, realize that consumers are not driving less, they're just consuming their transportation differently, right. and we've got to be distributors of transportation. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and that's our, our goal. So the big sell, who are your clients besides Nestle? Do you, do you have any automotive clients? I do. Okay. I do. I, I have a big um, publicly held company I'm going it, up to see in a couple of weeks. Super. And uh, I've worked with Subaru. I've worked Subaru. Uh, Subaru. Subaru. I've heard who of is them. those Subaru people? Them. I just I just did an engagement with a Penske a trucking. Yeah. And so yeah, so but it, it really is it's about how do you take your business to the next level? How do you take the friction out of business and how do you how do you get everybody on your page? Because the greatest companies in the world know how to build a movement and they know how to build an army of passionate influencers. I'd rather have all of my customers out selling what I do than me having to do it myself. And I'm gonna equate that to when something great happens on Facebook, like you do something great, isn't it better when your friends post it than when you post it yourself? Mr. The Fire Marshal had to shut me down at NADA. Yeah, that's kind of fun. <laughs> but someone else posted it. Let's talk about that. I have never seen an Uber ad in my life, only for drivers. The fact is that the Uber phenomenon spread virally yeah. because the experience was so great. It's the art and of the big sell. That, they the built a movement in transportation. People don't but you want do to. It first. People don't want to be advertised to. They no. like to buy. No. They like to be informed. They want to be influenced. But, but but they don't want to be sold. They don't, I, they want to be influenced. Right. right. Stop selling and start mobilizing. There's a new one for me. I'm trademarking that one. Okay. Stop selling. Good. 
start mobilizing, but you want to mobilize your champions. My, my friend, These are your champions in here. Good God, this my, place is packed. My friend Andrew and I were at a meeting in Chicago, and when, when we got out of the meeting, there was a line for taxis, and he said, no, no, I've got an Uber. I didn't know. We got into we got into this truck and we drove away and we got out of the truck and Andrew walked away and I said, My God, he's cheap. And I reached into my pocket and I gave a tip to the driver. And he said, You don't have to do that. I said, You gotta give a tip to the driver. No, it's Uber. And I said, What's Uber? I downloaded the app and the next thing you know, I'm using Uber. And now I I've got a, a dealership and several cars. And when I went to the auto show last week, I took an Uber because it's more convenient than using my own car. So it, it's just a question of we're not driving less, we're just driving differently. That is the big sell, right? And so I mean, it's crazy what you and I do, which again, we've been friends for a long time, but you and I do, it's so married, right? You know, it, it is. It causes friction for me as a business owner to have to go out and advertise, spend a lot of money doing it. I mean, that's friction. Like that's friction to my bottom line, if nothing else, right? And you better believe it. Yeah. And so, so why so when not do what you've done? So when your friends are asking you, why are we talking about this? You know, it's we're talking about it because we are sharing what we're doing in the hope that we're catching some customers here, and and we're not spending the money. And, and I wanted to talk to you about that. You are an internet sensation. You're everywhere. <laughs> I, I, you know, so, oh, call me Kim K. <laughs> what, what, what did she do now? Uh, I, and you're, you're, but what you're doing is you're leveraging technology, the right. technology that's out there. It would have cost you a fortune to have a film crew filming what you're doing, but yet yep. with an iPhone 10 or 9 or an 8, you yep. can get your message out to people in a cost-effective manner, inexpensively. And I'm watching the people that are following you, that audience grow. So one, you're doing a good job with your message because it's resonating. And Thank two, you. you're leveraging technology. And I think there's a lesson there for us. You know, and it's interesting. So um, I'm, I just had my book proposal, The Art of the Big Sell. It's sitting at my literary agent. Is this your second book? Yes, my second book. Crushing Mediocrity would be the first one. But anyways, but, you know, it's sitting there, and one of the one, number one thing she said, she said, you know, we're going to do all of the your social media footprint, whatever. And so I guess I've got like, I don't know, 18,000 followers on Twitter. But the impressions nice. that I had last month. What am I doing wrong? Right. 10 million impressions, wow. which they were able to, so like yeah, 10 you, you, million Well, you hit people. me 10 million times with your with, I'm always with your tagging stuff. you because yeah. you're the coolest guy I know no, in the automotive industry. Uh, 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 and now you are a man ambassador, which I just coined that phrase. Man ambassador? A man ambassador for women in automotive. Well, I, you know, I, I, I've worked uh, for women many years in the, in the That's business. That's right, because your partner is a woman who's an she, amazing, fantastic she, she is, and my first general manager uh, at, at, at our store uh, was a woman. And, uh, Nancy Phillips, she's still in automotive business, and I told you you've got to meet Nancy. Yes. She's an auto broker in the New England states, and a fantastic woman of integrity and intelligence, and she would launch my career the right way. Then I worked, of course, uh, she worked for Paul Singer, and I worked for Paul Singer up until Paul's passing in 2006. She's absolutely, though, a fantastic woman. Uh, Michelle Singer, Mrs. Singer's daughter, I worked for for a number of years before she went on to become a better veterinarian. And, uh, wow. and, and I, I didn't realize the amount of brains it takes to be that. You, you not only need to know the male and female anatomy, but you need to know male and female anatomy of 26 different Special yeah, you would think that animal, like you'd think things are in different places for sure. Yeah, well, they, well they are. <laughs> From, you know, the, the little I know about it, they are. I used to have a horse, like I. I but saw but, some but I, I, I've had some friends that were trying to get into to uh, veterinarian school, and it's much more difficult to get into veterinarian school and med school. And she's a she's a bright woman. And then uh, you know, of course, now I uh, work for her her mom. Uh, for and I'm not going to give you a big head or anything, but when I met you back in 2012, I mean, you were always such a supporter of mine, and somebody that I could trust and I could I could call for information or for advice, car dealer to car dealer, friend to friend. Well, like, hey, Brian, what do I do? Listen, and and that's the that's the other thing that uh, I would say to your friend that you were talking to the other day is that we're in no danger of anybody actually trying to pull this off. What we've done today with Google and Google Home and Google Assistant and Voice Technology has taken over a year of weekly meetings with a lot of people putting their heart and soul and effort into what they're doing. And I don't think a lot of people would take that time to do that. So, so but what, what sent you down the path? What made you decide that you needed to get into this, I'm going to call it a marriage, with Google? Well, the, if you can't beat them, join them, and we're in no danger of beating Google. They've all written, look, look Bezos, didn't invent, he he did, is fired Bezos up. didn't invent the internet, right? He leveraged the internet. He didn't invent Federal Express. He took Federal Express, he took the internet, he took books, and he sent them to everybody. And now he's doing it in every industry. It's a good Friday, let's go. Preach. So, no, it, it's, he's doing it in every industry. And so we set out with a goal uh, to double business in two years. 
And I, I realize that I'm, I'm not smart enough to do that with my current level of education, doing things the way that we're doing it. So I got myself around some other bigger thinker, thinkers. And one was I went back to NYU uh, with Julian and uh, went to school and to learn about disrupting. She's and, then, and then uh, we, we got together with the folks at Google and we started looking at things expansively. How would they do? What would they do? One, Google's open 24 hours a day. So, so WWGD is what would Google do? Well, well okay. What would Google I mean, do? Yeah. They don't have a telephone. Uh, or if they have a telephone number, I don't know it. Because they, they want to solve everything without the need to have to call. Mm -hmm. Amazon doesn't have a telephone. Could you imagine it makes go, me freaking crazy going online too. with, with, with uh, an Amazon Alexa and asking Alexa to order something and they say, excuse me, we're closed. They're open 24 hours. We've got to move at the speed of the customer. And our customers are everywhere, all over the place. The last place they want to be is in car. So how there. much has your business expanded? I know this is the Brian Ben stock show, but you know I'm taking over a little bit right now because yeah. these are people, my people are watching it too, and they ask me everything. I mean, I, they act like, you know, I know Bono or something, because I know this guy right here. I like Bono. Right, you like Bono. Okay, so you can be him when you grow up. But anyways, so how, how much has your business expanded? Like, what percentage have you guys increased since you, 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 you married Google? Well, we're in beta test with Google right now. We've got a, a, a number of Google on his finger. We've got a, a number of select customers that are using the technology to order service, pick up and <clears throat> delivery. And I have to tell you, the organic <laughs> surveys have been incredible, like nothing I've ever seen. We're creating raving fans. So now we're working on a strategy to roll it out uh, to more of our customers and then to go outside of our customer base with it. And it's no secret that we're not going to stop at service. We're going to keep going with it because there's a bigger play there, of course. But I think You're going to have to buy some more real estate. No, in fact, we want less we real estate. Here? We want less real estate. Uh, we, we need to reduce You're the headcount. You're going to sell 1,000 cars this month. Where are they? That, they're, they're close by. <laughs> they're close by. That's one of the secrets. No secrets on. They're on the roof. But, but, but the, you know, what, what we have to do is leverage technology to reduce expense, reduce headcount, or in our case, we want to keep the headcount the same and double business, thereby reducing the number of people per transaction it takes to do business. I'm telling you, as a former car dealer, I'm going, how are you going to do this? You still have to deliver the cars. I mean, and the, this place is the a cars, machine. The cars have wheels, man. It's easy. But someone's it's, got to show someone how to use the cars well, when the they person buy that drives it there, shows them how to use it, and, and all the assistance you need online at your fingertips, and we're here. But but to drag somebody in to think that they need to sit here for three or four hours, there's a kiosk behind us. I'm listening to people buy cars. Yeah, we're sitting here. right right here. They can select the car, select the monthly payment, select the down payment, get quick, transparent information. This is a different business that we're in right now, and we need to adapt to it. So. What does I mean, everyone out there watching? Because I know you know your audience is automotive. My audience is automotive. Everyone's like, okay, I want the secret sauce from Ben Stock. I want to know how to take my business to the next level. Like, what is the one thing you're going to tell? Because because I'm going to get 49 texts when we get off this thing. The future is frictionless. Take the friction step by step, process by process, out of what you're doing, so we can do more business. You know, I, I love the Kodak example. Kodak had the, uh, the patent for digital technology. They didn't uh, leverage that because they thought they were in the film business. But they were in the, in, in the photograph, photography business. Digital photography has taken over simply by taking the friction out of uh, uh, taking a picture. Used to be you took a picture, you had to wind the camera, take the picture, take all the pictures, then rewind the film, then take the film, drop it off at the film studio to get yeah. developed, go back there a couple of days later, or if you're really special, an hour later, which still meant you had to go back there, you pick up your pictures, to that. realize when you got your pictures back that you cut off Uncle Charlie's head <laughs> and, and you couldn't recapture the moment. That nobody realized that this digital gave you instant gratification and the ability to send that picture anywhere. By taking the friction out, more pictures are taken every single day now than were taken in the entire history of film. More pictures yeah, are taken selfies. every day. There's a selfie museum oh, yeah. now. Well, that's you. I saw that that's today. That's you. I see you selfie all the time. Selfie museum. I saw it today in New York. Well, uh, that's disgusting. <laughs> it's just so sad. It, 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 but hey, this is the world that we're in. But more pictures are taken every day today than we're taking in the entire history of film because all of us have a camera. So if we made mobility available to everybody, it stands to reason we have a lot more mobility. And we're in the mobility and transportation business. So what you showed me a few minutes ago, which again, I'm in dealerships all the time, I've never seen before. So those gentlemen standing there right now. So I could be anywhere today standing and I can go and I can go to Paragon Direct, I can hit a button. Literally, the lease payment. 
because leasing's, leasing's always been something like on the website. I, we've always had a hard time getting the right payment, and they got to work yeah. it at the desk. Yada yada yada. Anyways, but I, I literally, I think, I think I leased two or three Hondas today, playing with it. Kept saying, "Why do you want my social? I don't get it." No. Anyways, but you know, I mean, but I could absolutely. I mean, not only could I get a car immediately, have it delivered to me, but better yet, I could have it my way. It was like Burger King over there, versus somebody telling me, "Hey, put this much down, and here's your payment." And then we start playing that dance and that negotiation. I got to pick it out, print it, and say, hey, this is what I want. Let's go back to Uber or Lyft. What, what do people like about it? They have shared control of the process, right? You can pick the driver. You can pick the car. You can pick the size of the car. You can judge the, the driver by his or her rating with the consumers. Uh, you can pick the time you want to be picked up. So you have shared control of the process, as opposed to standing there with your arm up in the air praying that the taxi is going to stop. But that's what happens with the car dealerships every single day when when you start working car deals, and it's like, okay, if you're going to put 2000 down, here's the payment, and then here comes the dance, well, it's, right? It's like, it's like th three card lunch. I mean, but I did it three times here in five minutes. Yeah. And, and you can just hit print. The order goes right to the manager. The manager pulls the car down. And, and, and you're, out of here, you're out of here in 45 you're minutes. You're out of here, and, and or, you don't even have to come here to do it. Or, if you want to take your time yeah. and have that process take longer, that, that's okay too. We're, we're not doing this to be disrupted. We're there doing this to survive. We're doing this to compete. We're doing this to stay in business. And if you don't do it, I don't think you can survive. What's coming? And what's coming is not from other dealers. What's coming is from the, the gang of four, the, from Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google. Those guys are going to disrupt. And customers automatically trust them and move well, in that direction. Well, something's going on with Hyundai and Google right now. Or Hyundai and Amazon, excuse me, because when I spoke yesterday at the New York Auto Show, Hyundai was in the room. And one of the other speakers called them out and said, I guess their, uh, whatever one of their programs is, is that you're going to be able to buy a Hyundai. Now it'll be delivered at the local dealer, but Hyundai is going to be selling cars off of Amazon. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm not sure how that business model is going to work. Yeah. If that business means me turning over our business to Amazon. You'll count, do it to sell no, cars. Count, no, you got, count me out. I, I, I am not going to be a wholesaler. For, for anyway, we, but, are, but we, we if, provide what if that we happens? provide retail transportation to customers. We provide uh, transportation solutions solutions directly to customers, and, and I'm going to keep. If, if somebody else is in there, be it Amazon or another middleman, it's going to make the cost to the consumer higher, not lower. So, provided we can offer the same buying experience, there'll be no need for the consumer to go to a third-party vendor. Okay, so what you're saying is, is that so Amazon and Google, they're actually going to create friction. Well, of course. For the consumer, of right? Course. So that's just one more layer in that's there. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying Google's going to do that. I'm saying the other guys. Uh, are Amazon. Well, Amazon is who I was talking about. Sure. I said Google, but I meant to say Amazon. But, you know, but I mean, you know, the minute, you know, it's a slippery slope. So the minute one OEM jumps in bed with them, I mean, do the others start to follow suit? You know, I, it's, it's unclear. There are these pesky little things called franchise agreements, and we, we have to honor those and respect those. Um, I, I think many of the but dealers, Elon got her out of it. Many of the OEMs are trying to figure out that space. And I, I like Honda's approach. Honda has, has a measured approach uh, to this, making sure that they do what's best for their dealers and for their customers. And so long as they're doing what's best for the dealers and the customers, I'm on board. Well, so not only did I nominate you and put you on the board of Women in Automotive, but we're actually telling your story and the Paragon story in the art of the big sell because it's so, it's just, it's so ahead of its time. It's so revolutionary. I mean, you know, nobody else came up with the fact. I mean, I think car dealers live for the friction and all of you out there don't start sending me texts and stuff, but it's true. It's, it's like, it's like we almost thrive well, on the well, friction. Well, 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 let's, let's say that we, we thrive on the friction. I think we have a vested interest in supporting the business model as it is, right? If you're a dealer, and you spend $10 million to build a service department. And then you're hearing that we don't want customers going to that service department. Right. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know, I, I'm not suggesting that there's no need for a dealership or that there's no need for a service department. I'm saying you're going to have a need for that. But there's also a need for us to be more uh, uh, consumer-oriented in, in, in bringing, picking up and delivering services to customers instead of forcing them to come to the dealership. And, and i got to say that a lot of people pick up and deliver. But what I saw over there, um, over at that machine, when I could literally have it my way, Burger King, and I didn't have to talk to one of these guys. I didn't have to talk to a sales manager. And it wasn't just the normal when you see an ad, okay, with 1500 down plus GTNL, da 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 da. It was like I could play with the whole thing. I could say, I want this car, these ones pull up. I want I, I want a lease, which is a big deal. 
for eleven hundred and fifty down. I don't want to put twenty nine ninety five down. I want to put eleven fifty. You gave me my payment, my residual. You told me exactly the cars that were in stock, and it took thirty seconds. Lisa, we're in an efficient, Boom. we're in an efficient market, and an efficient market is where the buyer and the seller right. have the same I, information. And dealerships all over the country, all the time, and I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this. That that's they're still playing the cat and mouse game. Many many dealers are, but they're starting to realize that that's not going to be the way of the future. It's not going to be but the way. You have it available to your customer on the showroom floor. No, we which have is, it. Which, which is no fear. We have it available to the customer anywhere they access the internet, whether that's uh, on their iPad, their iPhone, their Agreed. PC. Agreed. Agreed. But access other dealers it. might do that too. But then, but then it's like, oh man, man. When, once they hit the dealership, you know, we're going to play the game it used to be played, and you no, don't. No, you They're can't. over there you, doing it. You, you can't. That business model is outdated, and we're finding as our business continues to grow, the customers are getting more receptive to that. And you yeah. got to respect. The customers. If you want to have a four-hour transaction, we'll accommodate you There's as well. There's a store across the street. Uh, no, we're, we're still keeping <laughs> you. Uh, but but if you want to do the transaction in, in, in 40 minutes or less, uh, we think there's a big opportunity here. Well, Lisa, I want to thank you for yeah. coming to our, our, our little house of Honda, Paragon Honda in Queens, New York. Little old Honda. And, and, and I want to wish you continued success on thank women you. in automotive. I think there's a... Well, now that you are a man, man ambassador and on the board, I'm very excited to serve alongside you because you are going to bring so much power, so much uh, passion um, for the industry and just so much knowledge because, well, because women don't like friction. And I think that you're going to be able to drive that message home and really help us um, uh, evangelize even more the importance of friction, retail frictionless, um, building a movement, which you have joined our movement for women in automotive. And again, I'm well, excited uh, to serve alongside you guys. Uh, uh, avoiding women, uh, avoid women in business and in automotive uh, at your peril. That they are purchasing and consuming 50% of our products and they, they're a part of 80% of the decision or 85% of uh, now. So it's really important that uh, women are comfortable with your, your business model and that they see that you embrace that. And you saw here we have a, a staff of some really special You do. Dynamic. You do. It's People unbelievable. I mean, 90% of your business. BDC is women and that's because you get it. But forget the BDC. Uh, from the top down. Yes, from the owner, you're right. From the owner that's to right. senior management that's to right. the executive level, my disruptive team yes. is 90% female. And, this is a and, guy that gets it. So if you, if anybody out there who is in uh, New York and wants a Honda, come on down. I mean, seriously, it's the end of the month. A PSA for Paragon. Thank Paragon you. Paragon Honda stuff. and Acura. And Acura. <laughs> I'm, I'm a happy Acura dealer as well. That's but right. Lisa, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Appreciate Always it. a Always good time. Yes.